Hello everyone, that's just a dad. Today I'm gonna to do an unboxing and show you how to set up for the first time this Eufy robot vacuum cleaner from Walmart. It's their Black Friday sale for $198. So it doesn't have many things in the box. I've taken everything out of the box. There's the self um, cleaning unit. That's gonna empty out the robot when it's done cleaning your house. Okay, so first let's take the plastic off. Make sure you get these white things out. This is to keep the bumper from moving. We've got this. Doesn't look like we have anything down here. Open this. Let's just make sure this is all installed correctly. Yeah, looks like we've got a filter. Okay, so just pull the filter straight out like that. There's the brush roller. Everything comes pre-installed already. There's the wheel. Don't forget to take that last piece of plastic off. Up here at the top, that's where the bag goes. The bag comes pre-installed, so everything's going to be sucked into that bag. I'm taking it out just to kind of make sure it's installed correctly. Here's what it looks like underneath. Also comes with this little tool, which is really nice. So the vacuum cleaner is going to clean your house, then it's going to back up and dock itself, charge, and that base unit's going to suck everything out of the robot vacuum cleaner into that bag that's inside there. And we got to mount the base unit about a almost of almost two feet on each side's got to be clear and about five feet in the front. That way you can get back. There's the cord. You're going to plug the base unit into a receptacle. Now that is the lidar navigation right there. That thing turns and it it's going to sense. Now I don't know if that's a sensor on the front or not. I don't think it is, but the obstacle does have to be high enough for the lidar that top circle to find it. There's the two charging contacts. So when it docks, it's going to charge the robot vacuum through those two contacts. Let's open this up and see how it looks inside here. And again, make sure that's nice and closed. All right, let's just push it back onto the dock. Now it's going to turn itself on. If you wait about 10 seconds, it turns itself on. The manual says to turn it on by hitting the power button. But my, mine, are, mine turned itself on just by docking it. So you may not have to do that step. Now see, I, it thought I was telling it to clean, so now I gotta redock it. Yeah, it already turned itself on. Okay, so you're gonna have to get the Eufy Clean app. I'm using my iPhone here. You do have to log in. There's what the lights look like. They're kinda dim, I had the lights on bright and I really couldn't see them, but those will turn steady white when it's fully charged. There's a light also there on the base unit that's you got to give allow it to send notifications. You got to agree to certain things in the app, give it permissions. Now you're going to click the little add button here on the top. We want to scroll down and get the L50. There it is, L50ES. I got to click on that little button there at the bottom. Heard a voice and the button lights are on. Yep. So click that little button and that little link's going to click. Resetting the Wi-Fi. So I, I got to go down back to the robot, press those two buttons for about three seconds and it's going to talk to me. Okay, so it's talking to me. Now I got to click the little button there that says I heard the voice. Yep. Reset complete. I got to go enable. Allow precise location. Start connecting. So find it needs looks like 2.4 gigahertz is what it use uses. So select your Wi-Fi, then give it your Wi-Fi password, and then you're going to connect to the robot it's on your iPhone. You got to click Wi-Fi. You got to connect to the. There's a Wi-Fi being transmitted by the robot. And there it is, the Eufy. So we got to click on that. Now you got to go back to the Eufy app. So click back to the Eufy app. Okay, so now it's, it looks like it automatically started connecting. connecting Wi-Fi. Yeah, the robot spoke to me and said it was connecting. 
down there. All right, seems to be going a little faster. Successful. All right, it's successful. Let's call it the, you can name it whatever you want, but I'm just gonna hit save. There it is, it shows that it's charging. Let's click on it. Optimize the charging base for recharging. Yep. Yep. And it has an update. So we're going to go ahead and update the firmware. And upgrade now. Please wait. System updating. Not sure how long that'll take. Sometimes that takes five or ten minutes, but this one seems to be going pretty fast pretty fast. Now I do have my Wi-Fi turned on my phone. System upgrade complete. Okay, that took about three minutes. Now I'm gonna hit back. Now once see I Charging. so it does come with 69% battery charge. That's really good. Because it says it can map your house in less than 15 minutes. So we're gonna do a quick mapping. Okay, so this is where my base unit's gonna stay. So now I'm gonna do the quick mapping. Go ahead and open up the the doors to all your rooms and pick up like shoes and different things and you're simply going to click on the quick mapping it tells you to kind of pick things up and open doors get started quick so it's going to go around your house and map your house so it's pretty quiet when it's doing this and you can watch the map as it builds the map that's pretty cool this is in real time and it shows me where the vacuum cleaner's at. And that is pretty much where it's at. So that did not take very long at all to map my house. So that's a pretty good representation. I did close some of my rooms to my um, bedrooms because I just didn't have everything picked up yet. All right, so let's see what we got to do. Manage the map. So if you've got more than one floor, you can do multi-map saving. I'm not going to do multi-map saving. So there's the current map. Click the three little lines up there. Name map. So I'm going to name it. Yeah, map one's fine. I can name it top floor, bottom floor, but just map's fine. Uh, let's go map. All right, map test. Now let's go here. Uh, what if we click on it? Manage map. Let's be down here. Click that. Okay, that's where we edit the map. Is that that little button right there at the bottom right? Let's edit rooms. So it got it got did a pretty good job. It knew that was a different room than this one. Okay, so let's name let's name this room family room. Okay, so now it did it. Let's name this room uh, living room. Okay, so I'm done naming the room. Click the little arrow up here. Let's go to divide. So I do have a hallway. Tap the room to divide. So you're going to move this red line. And I can rotate it, make it bigger or smaller. I can zoom the map in. That's pretty nice. Let's name this the hallway. Then you got to hit that little check, that little green check mark. All right, now I've got two different rooms. I like that it makes some different colors too. So let's call, you know, I'm, no, I'm done editing. Okay, so tap the little arrow here. Let's go to, I could merge rooms if there was two rooms that needed merged. Let's go back and click, let's add a no-go zone. No-go zone. So I do want it to stay out of this one area. No-go zone. Oh, I can do virtual boundaries too. So zoom on over here. The couch was here. I had a hard time going underneath the couch. Hit the check mark right here. And now that no go zone will show up as a red box. Let's do, let's edit again. No go zone. I could do a boundary. So a virtual, I'm going to put a boundary over here. My computer's over here. 
I got to drag this over. Yeah, right there. Click the little check mark. And then the stairs are right here too. So I like click on edit map. You can do cleaning sequence. That's pretty nice. Tap rooms to oh, so what rooms do you want to clean first? One, two, three. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we've got our map pretty well set. Let's click when we want to do different modes. Here's we can do different turbo, max, boost IQ. It's gonna it's gonna increase the suction depending on what type the floor is. We can do custom. So you can customize each room. So say that room's really dirty all the time. I want to go to turbo on it. And I can go to two passes on it. And hit the little check mark up here. So that's pretty nice being able to customize each room. Again, that's the mode general. Yeah, pretty neat. Now when I'm ready to clean, I can just hit the clean button here, the start button, like the play button. It'll clean the entire house in that order I gave it. Or I can do just a room. Say I want to clean just that room. Or say I want to do a zone. Oh, I don't have any zones. I got to add zones to be cleaned. So I want to add a zone. No. Oh, okay. I got to hit this little button right here. And I can say, okay, clean this area right here. It's really dirty with one or two passes. I'm going to go back to auto. Let's go up here. This is where like the settings are. Schedules. I can create a schedule. Have this come on. I think that's probably the best thing. Like if you leave the house every day, have it come on. You can have it repeat. That's pretty neat. Cleaning history. It'll show you where it's clean. No data yet. Base station settings. Automatic haircutting. Hmm. I've never seen automatic haircutting. Auto empty frequency after one clean. After two cleans. I like it to auto empty uh, every time it cleans. But you can also do it by time. Every 30 minutes. That's how the base, it'll go back and dock itself and then and then empty out the robot. That's pretty neat. Manual controls. Oh, I can move it with the manual controls. I can have it set up. I can change the voice settings. I can lower, if that's too loud for you, you can lower it. Robot settings, auto return cleaning. Definitely want do not disturb. These things will come on at night. And it's, I like that it's set for 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Child lock, activity log. I like that the default is set off. It's not going to upload your activity. Auto return and charging. Yeah, I like that. Firmware update. Fine. So if you lose your robot, you can hit start. Robot, robot is on the charging base. So if it was stuck somewhere, it would probably make its tone. Yeah, pretty, pretty neat. Pretty basic, but very user-friendly is what I like. Okay, so let's go have it clean a room. Room, let's clean this one and hit play. All right, it's going to undock itself and it's going to travel to that room. And there it goes. And I can see where it's going. That is live pretty much that's exactly where the robot at, robot is in my house and it's going to the family room to clean okay so it's going around the perimeter of the room and then it's going to start cleaning the interior of the room i've got some fake dog poop that's kind of low to the ground i've got a basket that's high this dog poop's a little bit taller let's see if it misses them or runs over that dog poop okay here it comes up oh it ran over that dog poop so that one was not tall enough. And it will continue to run it over. Now it doesn't claim to have avoidance detection that low to the ground. It does say that if it's tall enough, it'll avoid it because that LiDAR sits on top of the robot. It doesn't have anything in front that can sense something in front of it. But that LiDAR that's turning that circle on top, that's turning and detecting objects. So I imagine it's gonna see this but it's not going to detect. Now, they don't claim it. It's only $200.
you really do have to get the more expensive ones, around four or five hundred dollar ones, to where it has a camera in the front that when it sees dog poop or something low to the ground like this, that it will will avoid it. Now I do like that it kind of it knows where it's at. It knows it makes those lines in your carpet so that it's it's going back and forth and not missing a spot. I also like that when it goes around the perimeter of your house or the, around the room, it knows where that perimeter is and it doesn't bounce up to your walls each time it goes back and forth. It kind of stops short because it's like, well, I was already there when I did the perimeter of the room. I like that feature. And again, here's the small, you know, it's going to run it over. Yeah, it, it doesn't claim to, to know avoidance detection like that. You do have to get a more expensive vacuum for that. But now it should see this. Uh, it went right beside it. It should get it next pass. All right, here it comes. Okay, it did detect it. And it's going to go around it. That's pretty. Yeah, okay, so that does work if it's tall enough. It gets, a, it gets pretty close to it. I would like for it to stay a little farther away than that. Okay, so you can pause it by hitting this button right here. I can tell it to go dock itself. I just saw it. There's one more sticker I forgot to go. And now if I want to tell it to start again, just hit that button. It's not really loud. Okay, it avoided it again. Let's, imp let's see how it's well it's done. Let's stop it and let's open it up in the back. Okay, it's actually done a pretty good job with dog hair. It's got some crumbs, some small stuff. This room was recently vacuumed by another vacuum, robot vacuum, the Roomba, and it's, it's doing a pretty good job. Now, it will, when it's all done, go back, and the base unit will suck everything out of this chamber into a bag. Now, it even shows me the lines that it has cleaned. That's exactly where the Roomba has gone. It did show that one obstacle. It did show that. And I can control it from here. I can pause it and I can tell it to go home. Yep, stop cleaning and head to home, yes. Okay, so it's navigating itself back home. It actually does a great job navigating back home. It doesn't hit the furniture as it's going home. It's pretty neat watching it kind of turn the corners. There, it's going to dock itself. Found the dock really easy. It kind of pulls up to it and then does a circle to make sure that's it. It's lining itself up. Now it should back itself up. Okay, so it should empty out the robot vacuum. Okay, it, it takes a while. I don't know what was happening. I lifted the lid and pushed down on the bag and then it started to suck everything out. So I don't know if I didn't have, I mean, I waited about, you know, 20 seconds or so and nothing happened. Then I lifted this up and then I pushed this down. Maybe I didn't have this down all the way and then, it, but it kicked on with the lid open. So there's no sensor on the lid. So I don't know what happened there, but let's see if it emptied everything out. Well, there's still some ground coffee in there. Got most of the hair out. <laughs> okay, so I docked it again. Let's see if it empties it out. I might have interrupted the emptying out. Well, it's not going to empty out again. I'll have to clean a whole other room, but I would have thought it would have emptied out a little bit better than that. You know, one of the selling points is is how much suction this has. It says it has 4,000 PA, but I thought it did okay. It probably does better on carpet. The coffee was a pretty tall order, but I thought it would have got pretty much most of it. Now, where Eufy Shine is their app. Their app and their map are probably some of the best in the industry. I love their map, their interface. I love everything about the app. I just wish their vacuum might have been a little bit better. But this is their $200, kind of their entry-level mapping your house it doesn't do the bumping where it's just going to bump off the room and do random cleaning and it does have a self-emptying base 
Okay, so I've got some ground coffee here on the hardwood floors or linoleum. Let's see how well it cleans. It's, I've got it cleaning this room right now. It's going around the perimeter and then it'll start cleaning this. Now I did notice when it's on that rug, it does change the suction volume. Looks like maybe it should have done a little better job. Okay, here it comes. Well, coffee is pretty hard to pick up, and it did scoot a bunch of it right there to the carpet. I didn't put it anywhere the carpet was, but it scooted a bunch to it. Looks like if it was a smaller mess, it might have done an okay job. So if you have a big mess, you may want to put it on two passes where it goes where it goes over it twice. I am only doing one pass. Alright, looks like it's going over some of it again. Okay, I think it's done. So yeah, it needed two passes. It's going back to the dock. Be sure and check out my Just a Dad videos group page on Facebook. This is where I do my free giveaways. So when I'm done with these products, I will give them away. Also, this is where I got my Simple Sip Coffee, Just a Dad Dark Roast Simple Sip Coffee. It's going to be for sale. It's a dark Brazilian roast, whole bean, K-cup, and ground. And I also started a podcast, Coffee with Dad Podcast. This is where I interview uh, different people about their stories with coffee. So check that out. That's on all those platforms that you get. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's even on um, YouTube. I do a video version of it also on YouTube. So again, I really do appreciate everybody's support. Again, if you could, please like and hit the subscribe button. That really helps out my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.